We're delighted to have as our commencement speaker today, John M.G., who's the Executive Director of Atlantic and Cape May County's United Way of Greater Philadelphia and Southern New Jersey. Under Mr. M.G.'s leadership, the United Way campaign raised over $33.5 million in support of local programs and services. He is the past president of the Electronic Medical Records Exchange of South Jersey and serves on advisory boards of the Stockton Center for Successful Aging and the Stockton Center for Community Engagement. He earned his bachelor's degree in accounting from Wheeling Jesuit University, which means he could still earn a degree from Stockton and join this esteemed group. It's my great pleasure to welcome John M.G. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for the honor of inviting me to address Stockton's graduate and doctoral students in this commencement program today. The irony of this opportunity for me is that in just two weeks' time, I will be where many of you are in the audience at my son's graduate graduation, however you say that, uh, as I listen to someone give uh, a speech at his commencement. So in the spirit of paying it forward, and I will try to keep my marks brief, remarks brief, and hopefully hopefully to the point. I also want to personally thank Dean Leitner for the invitation to give this speech, although I must confess his advice to help prepare me was a bit daunting. Although I had a general idea of what I was going to say today, Lou told me to check out two good examples of commencement addresses. One by Steve Jobs, <laughs> okay, the other from none other than writer Kurt Vonnegut, who for me at least is right up there with Mark Twain at crafting things to say. So talk about pressure. Um, it seemed like Lou's advice for me to, to create something just between greatness and near perfection. No problem, right? Uh, as it turns out, the messages at the core of their speeches are not dissimilar to what I have to share with you today, but more about that later. Uh, by the way, I was nearly led astray in my quest to find Vonnegut's speech, and of all places had to resort to Snopes.com to get the real story. It turns out there was a column written by a Chicago journalist that eventually made its way around the web as being the words of Kurt Vonnegut from a commencement speech supposedly given at MIT in 1997. Go figure. That rumored speech contained the advice, sunscreen. If I could offer you only one tip for the future, sunscreen would be it. Certainly sounds like Vonnegut. And he was indeed flattered by the misrepresentation, saying that he would have been proud to have written those words. Sunscreen. So it reminds me that famous film from the 60s, The Graduate, where the lead character, Benjamin Braddock, is given advice for his future, encapsulated with the simple utterance of one word, plastics. Well, I too tried to distill my words and thoughts for today into one profound word, like plastics, but couldn't quite get there. But I did manage to package the theme of my message into two words, and here they are. Get engaged. For all you romantics out there, that's not where I'm going. Rather, my advice to you all, as you take those next steps toward a very promising future and a brilliant career, is to make those experiences even more fulfilling by getting engaged in your community to help others and improve the quality of life for all. So to help sell you on this, I'm going to share some of the key drivers in my life that have helped me to inspire or help to inspire me toward a life to service of others. And I'll re relate to you some other observations along the way to underscore my community engagement theme. I recently started my 30th year working for United Way. And this journey has been experienced in four very, very different communities. But I believe the foundation of my life's commitment to others really can be found in three influencers in my early life and career. My father, my college experience, and truly some selfless, incredible volunteers that I've come across over the years. My earliest inspiration to help others came from my father. He was an usher at our church. My siblings and I used to snicker about how even in the normal course of his daily activities, he had what we called usher instincts. We'd be walking in a parking lot with my dad and he would notice a piece of paper, trash in the ground. And sure enough, he'd pick it up, find a trash can, and throw it away. 
It seemed like every time we were out with him, he would be courteous, considerate, almost chivalrous to others all the time. So as kids, it seemed rather odd behavior to us back then until it sunk in over time that dad was engaged in making a difference in his community in any way he could. It wasn't long before I began trying to practice these usher instincts in my own life. I'm sure if you think about it, there's someone in your life who has left an indelible and positive impression like this on you as well. I consider myself fortunate to be a product of a Jesuit education, having received my degree, as you heard, from what is now Wheeling Jesuit University in West Virginia. The Jesuits, with 28 colleges and universities, have a tradition of academic excellence and service to others. Their approach is to educate the whole person, the mind, body, and spirit. Certainly receive an education that prepares you for a career, but there's a bonus. The opportunity to learn the value of and participate in the service of others. Wheeling Jesuits' motto is Luciat Lux Vestra, or let your light shine. This inspirational imperative has been an important foundation in my life and work, and perhaps it will be for you as well. I think all of us would agree that it's such an unfortunate waste to have well-educated folks in our communities simply focused on making life better for themselves. What a better use of this talent, this shining light, when it is used in the service at whatever capacity of others. Kurt Vonnegut, you remember him, even commented about this in his genuine address to the graduates of Rice University back in 1998. In his speech, he talked about the fate of those that he addressed. And I quote, they will find themselves building or strengthening their communities. Please love such a destiny if it turns out to be yours, for communities are all that is substantial about what we create or defend or maintain in this world. I couldn't agree more. I applaud the efforts of Stockton College in giving your students the opportunity to participate, participate in service learning opportunities. In fact, our United Way has been involved with a recent success story with some of these students. Perhaps some of you are in, in the hall today. Uh, Stockton students have been helping us provide free income tax services over the past few years. And this year, we increased the number of returns filed here in Atlantic County from 265 to 413. It's a huge jump, more than $465,000 in refunds coming back to low-income families and individuals. And the recent creation of Stockton Center for Community Engagement is going to be a tremendous success and a tremendous resource for the college and our community and a great way to let those Stockton lights shine. The third influencer for me has been a collection of remarkable volunteers that I've worked with over the years, including quite a few from here at Stockton. There are some that come to mind from those early days working in West Virginia, at a time when unemployment was somewhere in the 20% range, with many steel mills being shuttered forever. In those tough times, not unlike what many face today in this community, there were dozens of these unemployed men and women that kept busy in their lives with helping those they viewed as even less fortunate than themselves. Just a few laters, back toward this way in Philadelphia, I worked with corporate CEOs who were successful and influential in their own industries, but found the importance and personal satisfaction in volunteering and giving back. One gentleman was from the UK, and he was so impressed by the concept of United Way as an efficient and effective way to garner support for those in need, that really it was an easy task to recruit him as a volunteer leader. Excuse me, leader. He continues his legacy of caring today, some 25 years later, by being one of the most generous benefactors to our organization. These volunteers, from both ends of that socioeconomic continuum, knew how to live united. Live United is what we've been calling our engagement strategy at United Way. Live United Way, excuse me, Live United is another imperative, like get engaged. That's a constant reminder that when we, as individuals, think outside ourselves, we have the power to facilitate change. When we reach out a hand to one, we're influencing the condition of all. This can be done as part of organized efforts or as personal one-on-one -on -one basis. And here's a perfect example of that. Just the other day, I heard a story of a young man who gave his new Boston Red Sox jacket to a young woman who had just completed the Boston Marathon and was chilled and somewhat dazed, as you can imagine, soon after the bombings there. When she was beginning to feel better, she tried to return the jacket to this young man, but he said, no way, you need it more than I do. That simple act, that shining light, made a tremendous and positive impact, not only on that young lady, that runner, but to those of us who heard 
and were moved by this story. Another observation about engaging in the service of others comes from the personal health angle. Volunteering is good for your health. Recent studies have shown that even at a young age, people who volunteer have healthier cardiovascular systems that could stave off heart disease. Volunteers who reported the greatest increases in empathy, altruistic behavior, mental health, also realized the greatest improvements in their cardiovascular health. Steve Jobs, in his commencement speech at Stanford back in 2005, encouraged the audience to love what they do and to not waste their lives living someone else's life. But he also stressed the importance of connecting the dots in our lives. What got us to where we are? Who helped us along the way? And what did it take to get us here? I think that when you take time to do this, you'll see there's a debt to repay in life, and not just those students' loans that have been stacking up for all of us. By giving of yourself in the service of others, living united, letting your light shine, you will see that these efforts will go a long way in repaying that debt and helping your community. It also just might put a smile on your face and a little jump in your step. Congratulations again to all of you. Thank you for engaging me as part of this great celebration. Thank you. Trustee Deininger, it's my distinct pleasure to recommend to you for the presentation of a Distinguished Service Award to Mr. John M.G. Dr. Satkamp, I accept your nomination of Mr. M.G. for the Distinguished Service Award with this salutation. In recognition of Mr. M.G.'s instrumental role in advocating on behalf of individuals and families throughout our community, and his leadership in raising over $33.5 million to support locally provided programs and services throughout Atlantic and Cape May counties. We also acknowledge his leadership as co-chair of the design team which created the newly merged United Way of Greater Philadelphia and Southern New Jersey, and his other contributions to the community, state of New Jersey, and the United States. <laughs> 